Now we have the SNA6 on the bench. Uh, we've completed all of the wiring. We have two machines here in parallel, and we're going to show you how to do the parallel settings using the Hynar Hi5. We've got two batteries here, and um, we're going to be using the batteries buzz bars as a connection point. Um, this, this will be our master Hi5. You can see all the bits are off. Uh, the battery is in an off state at the moment and we've got our can coming in here and this can is going to the master inverter and then from COM1 to COM2 on the slave and on the slave we've got dip number one on and this is all in accordance with uh, what the manual encourages us to do. Our master inverter, we've got our grid coming in there and we've got our EPS out and then we've got the communication coming from the master battery, it's going into this port here here is our CT. In the case of a single phase parallel, the slave does not require a CT. Only the master requires the CT connected. So we've got our EPS out, we've got our AC in. Here we've got our battery connected and we just make sure that's color coded. So the positive goes to red and the negative goes to the black. And vice versa, the machines are all wired up. So we're going to go through the startup phase now. I always recommend that you start the machine up with AC so that we can set the battery before we power the batteries on. We've powered both our machines on with AC. You can see that the masters come on first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set it for to receive the batteries. You press and hold the enter button until you get that little spanner that shows there. And then we're going to go up to number four, down to number three. And he's going to select lithium and he's going to select brand one and enter we can do exactly the same thing for the slave select the lithium iron and brand one and enter when you do that the inverter will switch off and it'll power back on again now you can see that both inverters are waiting you can see that the symbol is empty on both of them because they're waiting for the battery to be powered on Right, so now we've confirmed that our battery connections are okay. We're going to power the master on first and then we'll power on the slave. Okay, so we have a safe start up there. Immediately we have a reading on the master. Slave, we're going to have nothing because it doesn't know that it's in a parallel connection yet. So it, because it doesn't have communication with the battery, it still shows that there is no battery sitting there. But we're going to remedy that now. We're going to show you how to do the paralleling uh, and enable the battery sharing which is what we've got in this case so you press and hold until you get the little spanner we're going to go to setting number 21 enter and it says there para can you see it flashing at the top there so we're going to select para one phase and then battery share we're going to enable that and enter machine restarts so we're going to do exactly the same thing for the slave. So it's going to setting number 21, enter, parallel, one phase, and then, and then at the top there you can see that is this flashing uh, enable. So we select that, it switches off, it restarts, and immediately you can see that it now detects a battery. The reason being is because we have our parallel cable connected here. So the parallel cable, we only need one in this case, it runs from the inside parallel port to the inside parallel port and on both machines you can see that we have the dips in the on position both dips on the master and both dips on the slave if you had more than one machine then the middle machine will have its dips in the off position now that we have secure battery connection um, you can see that even here it is showing us the battery voltage it's 52.7 volts, 49% SOC, but automatically it picks all of that up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the EPS switches on, on both of them. Okay, so our relays have just engaged now. You can see on the screen, we're looking at the bottom of the screen, we have 230 volts output and 49.9 hertz. We have power on our light, and here we on our power display on the output, we also have 230 volts. 0.3 volts and 49.9 hertz. Remember that this power that it's simulating here is actually the grid power that it's simulating. And the minute we put the machine into off-grid mode, then it will put out a voltage and frequency as you set it on the uh, settings parameter. But I'm going to show you that added onto this. We now have our two six kilowatts in single phase parallel. 
We've got them set up on our bench with an oscilloscope. So here we have shared AC coming in on the red phase and the output from both of them are going to our load bank. Currently, we're running a 3.9 kilowatt load on the load bank and that's a resistive load. And as you can see here on the display, we have the parallel, we have the grid coming in and our load is 3.9 kilowatts of so that. Pretty much compares exactly with what we're doing on the load bank itself. So I'm very happy with the accuracy there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check the screens of the machine and see what the load carrying percentage is. This is our master and you can see here the load carrying percentage is 30% and on the slave it is 33. Now we can account for that because our feed coming in goes to there. So from there it goes down to the slave and the master has a longer line of uh, cable. So next we're going to trigger the grid loss by triggering the mains breaker and we're going to pick up what the time difference will be on the oscilloscope. We will see what the switching time is for a parallel setup. We've tr triggered the stop and we've caught it there. So I'm going to zoom in now and measure what the switching time is. Okay, so let's zoom across now that we've zoomed in where the time wave breaks. You can see here that our switching time in a parallel was 19.6 milliseconds. And we can duplicate that a number of times, uh, but every time we do get it, we come in at under 20 milliseconds, which is what is, is rated for a parallel. So in our next test, we're going to uh, single machine in single phase, and we'll see what the switching time is.